Hey guys, um, let me know if uh, if you can hear. I was um, <laughs> I was having some trouble with the computer. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to stream this in like HD, um, but the computer was just my first. My laptop didn't seem like it was up to the task. The video was just it had too much latency, um, so. Then I tried to do it with my desktop computer, but that one, the fan was just too loud and it was like, it just, it, I couldn't get it working. So I figured we would just do it the same as last time, just straight from the iPhone on the YouTube app. So, um, cool. Yeah, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for, for some confirmation before I get started. Awesome. Awesome, perfect. Hey. Hey guys. Yeah, glad you could make it. Awesome. Cool. All right, so I guess I'll, um, while we wait for some people to, to join, um, yeah, this is pretty much gonna be the same as last time. Uh, you know, I've got, a, I've got a huge box, this box right here, that we're gonna open up. Um, but also, in addition to that, I've got, let's see, I've got like a bunch of these other boxes that came in the last couple of weeks. So, um, most of these just got here, I want to say, um, like beginning of this week. Um, so yeah, I figured it would just be more fun to open, open them, uh, you know, all together. So, cool. Let's see. I'm just gonna wait like maybe another couple of minutes. I'm just messaging some people to make sure that they know we started. Where's everybody uh, watching from today? I was just in uh, New York City earlier this morning, so that that also was kind of. Um, you know, responsible for starting late. Um, I only just got back. I, I, I'm just outside of New York City here, so um, yeah, it was about an hour drive back. I was I was there for most of the weekend. So awesome. We got Norway, San Francisco. All right, well, I guess we can get started. Some people will shuffle in. So, all right, I'm gonna start with this, this first smaller box here. I'm just trying to see where this one came from. Looks like, I'm not sure if this came from Spain. Oh, Belgium, this one came from Belgium. All right, so, got our handy dandy razor here. Um, oh, you're from uh, Romania, okay, cool, 10 p.m. Awesome. Yeah, here it's uh, it's just 3 p.m., so it's not too late yet. And then we've got the Super Bowl later today, which everybody's uh, going to go crazy for. Supposed to meet some friends later to watch that. I don't, I'm not too crazy, you know, into the football or anything, but, but you know, definitely going to watch that. Awesome. All right, let's see what this first one is. Actually, it looks like a few CDs are in here. I'm trying to figure out how to... Oh, I see, okay. Sometimes they get pretty creative with the, with the packaging on here. There's like these, these plastic, or uh, these cardboard pieces here that are hard to, to cut. I'll see if I can just rip it. All right, let's see what we got here. So, looks like uh, a couple CDs and a record. Okay, I'm not sure what the point of that is. <laughs> Maybe just uh, to fill it out. 
Okay, so the first one here, I don't even remember ordering this. So this is DJ Deborah Wildlife 2003. Interesting. So Wildlife was one of those um, black hole recordings offshoots from uh, the early ones, uh, the early days. So I have, um, I think, the first Wildlife CD, and that's the only other one I have. Um, I can't remember exactly who mixed to that, but I'm pretty sure pretty sure the DJ who mixed the first one was actually Tiesto's manager at one point. And um, uh, there's a, a friend of mine actually did a good interview with him. I, I forget his, I forget the guy's name, but he was like Tiesto's manager. And um, yeah, this friend of mine, Victor Kidson, did a really cool interview, which is on YouTube. Uh, so definitely check that out. All right, here we've got Space Age. Five, Space Age 5. So obviously the first two were mixed by Tiesto. Um, actually, the first one was mixed by Tiesto. The second one was Tiesto and DJ Montana. And then I think 3, 4, and 5 were all just DJ Montana. So I've actually, I've never listened to Space Age 3, but I got Space Age 4 not too long ago, and there's some pretty cool tracks on there. So um yeah definitely want to wanted to get five and so so now the only one i i haven't listened to well after i listen to this one the only one i don't have will be space age three so so yeah just cool artwork there awesome all right and then these are pretty cool so i was talking recently with somebody so so this, this is all pretty much like early chesto stuff so this um this label, Guardian Angel. Um, I'm really trying to basically get every vinyl release that that label put out. Um, there's actually not too many. So it's, you know, it's not a huge catalog. It's not like Heart House where it's, you know, massive. Um, I think there were, I mean, probably less than 30 tracks that came out on this label, maybe, maybe 40. But, um, you know, the, it, it, this is kind of like the precursor to those, you know, early Magic CDs. Uh, you know, Chesto's Forbidden Paradise and The Lost Treasures, those all came out on Guardian Angel. Uh, but I really like the sleeve art on these. It kind of, you know, it's it's similar to, to Magic and then it's, you know, it's got the fantasy themes going on. Even the back is like, look at that. It's just super, super trippy. <laughs> but, um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm trying to get all the vinyl from uh from this label so this one is paradise and dubs in my heart i'm not i don't even think i've i've heard this uh i kind of just yeah i kind of just picked it up but there's some really good classes let's see what this other one is oh there's actually three in here that's cool so this one is let's see devotion featuring starlet love with me yeah, they've all kind of got that same art. Uh, let's see, this one. This one is Angel Dust Nightshade. It's interesting, the sticker on this one is a little different. It's got like, it's got the same like art on it. Cool. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you know, when I first, I guess around the time of when I first was starting this channel, I was really big into those, the early Tiesto stuff. Um, you know, I, I mean, still am, but those Forbidden Paradise are just classic. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna catch up on the chat here. I haven't uh, been reading it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Dimitri uh, DeWitt. Yeah, DJ LeBlanc. Um, hey, Will. Super progressive, what's up? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably my favorite track on the Guardian Angel. Uh, well, well, there was one that Tiesto did as part of his, like, Weston Storm group. It's called Porpoise. That one's really good. Nice kind of melodic number. Um, okay, this one you guys will like. This is an acetate. This one came from Argentina. Yeah, and actually this came from a, from a DJ who plays in Argentina. Um... And I've gotten, I've gotten another acetate from him in the past, a super rare. It was actually a, a copy of the Rue de Silva um, 
touch me. So super rare acetate that I got from him uh, in the past. Uh, and then he reached out saying that he had a, a few more. Yeah, so this one caught my eye, so I, I picked this one up. I think you'll find this interesting. But the real fun is going to be when we open this box, because there's just tons of stuff in there. This is, this is a tape to tape. Yeah. It is uh, Force Majeure Love Shines Through, the Space Brothers dub. So I'm, I'm thinking this might have been a working title because this, this track eventually came out. It was under a different uh, artist name. Was it the Space Brothers or uh, it, it was one of their other one of their other names, but um, so yeah, this copy is from, was that July 5th, 1999? Chakra, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It came out under Chakra. So um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is probably the same as the released version, but you never know with these. It could always be slightly different. So, um, so yeah, that's that. All right, let's see what else we've got. We got one in a FedEx bag here. Love when the sellers give you these little stickers and stuff. Serendipity. There we go. Free plug. <laughs> um, oh, this is cool. I remember getting this. This was just yeah, I just got this recently. So this is a cast uh, a cast and slide remix that uh, it's a remix of a tra track by The Cure called uh, I guess it's A Forest or The Forest. Um, but yeah, so this seems seems to be a pretty limited release. Um, cause there weren't a lot of copies actually here. Look at that. It comes with the promo sheet. So we've got, oh, the slide only this one. That's good to know. Um, slide, you're right. Slide versus secure, uh, the forest. So, uh, DJ only promo, right recordings. And, uh, we've got just a white label there. So awesome. Yeah. I, I heard this one on YouTube a while back and, you know, of course had to, Add it to the list. Okay. We still got, we've got three more of these small boxes and then we can go on to the big one. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try and stay a little organized over here so that it's uh, easy to put all this stuff away. See what this one is. Oh, this is cool. I have no idea what this is. So it's an orange side note. I really like I hate these. Um, they always for some reason put these like colored vinyl in these like plastic PVC sleeves. Here, there we go. It's astral projection, and this is Kabbalah, it's the new age mix of Kabbalah. This one's super cool. I just uh, somehow managed to only hear this for the first time recent recently, um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, super cool. Uh, you know, classic Goa trance. Um, yeah, astral projection. You know, 
they need no introduction. So that's cool. Definitely gonna replace that sleeve later. I got a whole bunch of nicer sleeves. Um, all right, let's see, what's this one? Interesting, okay, this one comes from New Zealand. Uh, yeah, let's open this one up. <laughs> yeah, no, there's definitely, definitely too many records. Honestly, at, probably after this, um, I'm, I'm going to be slowing it down a bit with the, with the vinyl purchases, just because, I mean, last year especially, it was like, it was just, you know, a huge year for me to, for buying a ton of records uh, with the Nick Warren auction and all that stuff. Okay, this one's super cool, um, even though the label's not in the best shape, but this is a, um, this is a, a super rare, I think it might even be the only copy, because uh, if you go on Discogs and look at it, it's this exact copy. But, um, so this has the Dumond dub of Trauma, which was a song by this Japanese singer, uh, was it Ayumi Hamasaki? I think that's how you say it. Um, so it's got the Dumond dub on this side, and then on, on the other side, it's interesting, it doesn't say, <laughs> It says vinyl dub play. But on the other side, it supposedly has some kind of fairy course and instrumental of a different uh, Ayumi Hamasaki song called Whatever. So um, I was looking into it. I'm not sure if the fairy course and instrumental came out. Uh, it seems like it might have, but um, I've also seen it with like a few different titles out there. So, um, so yeah, who knows? And I'm just kind of see what this is like. It, it, it's actually an interesting feeling record. Like, um, like it says du vinyl dub plate. It's not an acetate. It's 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 vinyl, but it's definitely feels weird compared to some other. You can see how like thick the rim is there. It's like never seen one like this. Now there's another there's another rare copy of this track which has the Dumond. Um, trauma and then it's got the the dub and the vocal mix that one i also have but uh but that one's not in this box or not in this batch of deliveries got that one a while back let's see hybrid mixes on the Yumi are great too oh i i was i didn't even realize that junkie xl did some mixes of her track so so that's pretty pretty sweet um yeah, and the Dumond ones, yeah, the, it seemed like they never came out, and then I think recently they just came out digital only, is that what you're saying? But, um, but yeah, so I've got, I've got another copy, um, with, it's just the Dumond mixes. Yeah, they're pretty good. Honestly, you know, it's not really, it's not my favorite track ever, you know, that, that sort of, I don't know, it's very kind of hands up, you know, big room sound. I'm more into the, uh, you know, uh, the, just the straight up classics like the Forbidden Paradise stuff or, um, or the, more the, the, you know, the progressive side, kind of like way out west type stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely wanted to get it. Okay. Sorry, just one slip. Open. Yeah, yeah, deep into that back in the day. Okay, this is cool. It's another acetate. Okay, and it's uh, they they wrapped it nicely with this plastic, <laughs> which is gonna probably be a, annoying to take off. But let's see. I think there's actually two acetates in here because on the other side, look, it's got. Uh, Something else. Yeah. As I'm taking this plastic off, and it's, uh, I'm uh, like the uh, the smell of the acetates is like um, like now that it's off, you can really smell these ones. Uh, you know, you guys know how those acetates have like that strong smell. Um, all right, so we've got two here. This, the other one's from Alchemy Mastering, which is pretty cool. Um, 
and I think these these came from Spain, if I'm correct. So, so let's see what this one is. Okay, so this is Billy Ray Martin running around town, uh, uh, tape to tape. Oh, this is the BT Jacobs Ladder mix on this side. And I think that might be it. This side doesn't look like it. Yeah, this side's blank. Um, also, just a, a question for everybody. I was asking this a while back, but like these sleeves, I can't find these kind of sleeves anywhere. A lot of these old acetates come with like these, I don't, I guess you could describe them as almost like a, like a wax paper, like a rice paper lined. Uh, and they just have a real nice feel to them. But, you know, uh, some of these that are like 20 years old, they're, they're, uh, um, you know, they, they, they're dirty on the inside or whatnot. So, you know, I try to replace them with new ones, but even, even the new like poly lined ones, um, at least the ones I've been, I, I'm not sure if this is, if this is poly lined, I'm not sure if they call that poly or if it's like rice paper or something, but whatever it is, like compared to the new ones, the, the new ones work fine too, but they just don't seem to, they don't handle as nicely in my opinion. Um, yeah, B, 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 I, I get the, um, the bags unlimited ones too. Um, but, but you, you probably know what I'm talking about, like with these other sleeves, um, you know, the, the old ones that came straight from Masterpiece or Tape to Tape. I, I'm not sure what that material is, but it doesn't seem like it's the same. But anyway, okay, and then this is cool. This is BT, Mercury and Solace, the BT's dub mix. And then on the other side, we've got the Hip Hop Phenomenon. So that's pretty cool. Let me take a look at this one. There's that. This was cut 1999. Um, I'm not sure if this is uh, January 9th or, or September 9th. I think it's September because usually they, they use the middle for the month. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I think this is the first acetate sleeve I have from Alchemy. I, I have some other ones cut at Alchemy, but they didn't come with the sleeve like this. I've actually got a really weird one, which is cut by Alchemy on one side, and then the other side's cut at like a, a, a I think it was the Triple Seven Productions. So that one was interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna create a little room here. Put that acetate here. Um, okay, all right, that's it for all the small boxes. So now we can get into the, uh, the mother load. <laughs> I'm just gonna move this stuff right here real quick. Um, sorry, I'm trying to clean up these boxes here. I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way for now. And then actually what I should also do, hold on one sec. I'm just, uh, I, I just went to grab this. This is a cool uh, box that I use, it's like an archival box. This is actually also from Bags Unlimited. So, um, so as we go through these records, I'm just gonna stick some of them in here so that they're not like stacked all on top of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two we just looked at in here. All right, I'll keep this off to the side. Okay, so, so this is the big one here. So this one, I can tell you, this one's exciting because it has, this one's got a bunch of acetates. Some of them are from Nick Warren's collection and some of them are from Dave Seaman's collection. And who knows, there might be other ones in here too. And then I think there's also just a bunch of records. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I mentioned it last time on the video, but I've got a friend who lives in the UK. So what I've been doing is like, you know, I'll buy one or two records from one seller and, you know, um, I'll just send them over to his house. 
because it's cheap to ship domestically in the UK. So if I, you know, if I find a record for five dollars or five pounds, and I ship it to my friend's house, that you know the shipping's not bad. It's like three to five pounds. But if I wanted to ship that to the U.S., then it would be like, you know, twenty-five dollars or, or more just for the one record and it becomes you know kind of cost prohibitive to just buy you know one or two records from a couple sellers over there but this way I can do it now and then I just get them all shipped at once so it's uh you know a lot more economical that way yep all right cool so I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, nice. So we've got a couple, we've got some, some other smaller boxes nested in here. Um, so here, let me put this big one, I'll put the big one down on the ground there. Okay. Awesome. All right, so right away we're getting into uh, some acetates here. This one's a little, a little worn out the sleeve, but no problem. All right. Oh yeah. So this is this is cool. I think uh, this one comes from Nick Warren's collection. So this is Karen Ramirez Troubled Girl. It's got the uh, Way Out West remix on this side, and then on this side, this this one I was excited for. It's got the Way Out West dub, which I don't think ever came out. So. Excited to get this one. Uh, hold on, real quick. I just want to see something because there were, I think there were some CDs in here too. I, I, I kind of like starting with the CDs. So, Oh yeah, there's a bunch of CDs in here. A lot of kind of promo CDRs and stuff. Yeah, let's uh, let's start with these, and then we can go through the acetates. Um, yeah, the the Royal Mail man. I had a major scare with a record um, that I got recently. Super rare acetate, and um, uh, so we sent it out. Uh, with Parcel Force, which is a division of the Royal Mail, but um, so it got shipped out on December fifth, and then it 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 literally didn't move for two weeks, and like this was one of the most valuable acetates, or you know, I, as far as like how much money I spent on it, it was like one of the most expensive, and uh, and it literally just sat in the UK for two weeks, which was terrifying. Let me just. Let me go grab that one real quick because you guys will be interested in seeing that. This one. So this one got stuck in uh, the Royal Mail. It was just sitting there for two weeks. And um, I was reading, I was reading articles. So they had this whole, there were strikes going on at the time. And so, you know, the, the, the entire Royal Mail was just like not working. Um, and, but I was reading articles and they were saying how the packages were just sitting outside and, and there were like pic pictures of foxes like chewing on boxes and stuff. And I was like, please don't tell me that a, that a fox is going to start chewing on this acetate. But uh, the seller actually wrote me this cool note about this one. So this has a breeder carnival on here. Uh, and this copy was owned by Mick Park. And I'm 90% sure that this one was used on his Painting in Silence mix compilation. So... So yeah, I was 
super relieved when this one finally made it to the to the US. There it is. And then on the other side, it's got this pitch black underground soundtrack. Um, but yeah, super cool. When I, you know, when I found this one, I was like, I was over the moon. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll put that away. And I got these uh, sleeve protectors. These are pretty good. These are from a company called uh, Big Fudge. And uh, yeah, I like them. They get the job done for sure. Okay, all right, sorry, let's uh, continue. So here we've got a bunch of CDRs. So let's see, this is Green Day, Wake Me Up Before September Ends, Oliver Moldon Edit. I think a lot of these I think a lot of these come from Dave Seaman's collection. So, um, so yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not familiar with a lot of them, but I think I just, um, you know, they're from Dave's and uh, pretty rare. You know, it's always cool to, to listen to these. This is cool. Sander Kleinenberg, The Fruit, Andy King, Andy King Mix. That's awesome. Okay, not sure what this is. Let's see, we've got, it's from 2008. Intelligent Sound Live, Lesson 9, United by Rhythm. Dave Seaman, DJ Yura, a UK and Russia. Okay, cool. Okay, this is Luke Zierzek, Zierzek, Showreel. Echo, One Day. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I pr I'm pretty much not familiar with any of these, but we're going to give them a listen, um, you know, obviously once this is all done. Dirty Hurts, Jerry Bonham. We got Sticky Fingers. Mid-Tone Java. Oh, this one's pretty rare. Salt Tank, The Fourth Way, which uh, this one wasn't released, I don't think. I think most of the tracks found their way onto other uh, Salt Tank releases, except for this, um, where is it? There was one that I think, uh, I think it's the title track, The Fourth Way here. That one was unreleased. It might be on YouTube now, though. Um, yeah, look at that. July 3rd. Not sure what year. <laughs> okay, here we've got Rebirth 2009 sampler. It's got a, looks like it has a promo sheet in here. Here's the Rebirth WMC 2009 sampler, a limited double CD sampler, including the most successful mixes of the Rebirth releases of the last few months and new material from awesome and talented artists. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna read all this, but cool. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, I remember buying this one. <laughs> um, I've seen this cover so many times and I'm, I, I've never actually listened to this CD, so, um, so I had to go out and buy it. This one was super cheap, I think. Um, but yeah, awesome to finally have that. Okay, we got some more CDRs here. Saved records, forthcoming releases. Denny the Phantom. Denny the uh, the Phantom, James James Talk Mix. Jim Rivers, Catch-22. Buick Project. Luminar. Hmm. Cool. Cool. This one's this one looks like it has a personal note to to Dave. It says uh, I can't really read it. Hope you're well. The September October releases on this CD aren't coming out till February March, so they'd be exclusive. Cheers. That's pretty cool. And it said it's signed by Will, so I'm guessing that's this Will. 
pretty cool. Okay, we've got an audio therapy one here. Cass, Opiate, Jared and Gilby, uh, Slacker, Dirty High, Sander Kleinenberg, Infusions, all great names here. It looks like it says Essential Mix Part 1, Dave Seaman. That's really cool. That's awesome. Okay, we got another one here. Let's see, it says promo CD. Let me just see what the label is. Couldn't read it in there. Let's see, it says hook recordings. Okay, that's what I thought it said. Hook recordings. Oh, it's got X Cabs, Infectious, uh, Taylor, Third Man Slide. Cool stuff on here. Oh, and it's got a note on here, too. Let's see. Dear Dave, some forthcoming releases enclosed. Feel free to cut an acetate of anything you may. <laughs> awesome. That's super cool. That might be the first thing I have in my uh, collection that actually mentions, you know, cutting an acetate. All right, here we've got Depeche Mode. Shake the Disease Infusion Remix. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Okay, this is super cool. Look at this, man. Triple Seven Productions uh, CDR. I've never seen one of these. And this is Orbital Illuminate, the Medicine Remix. That's super cool. You know, it's like you, you, you constantly are seeing the uh, acetates from these studios, but but rarely do you see... CDRs like I, I've seen some like tape to tape ones like it opens up like that that's awesome uh oh yeah let's look at the disc it's just a TDK <laughs> that's funny but yeah super cool you're always seeing the acetates but you never see uh, the CDRs I, I've seen some from tape to tape uh maybe one from Masterpiece but I mean never in person this is the first one I have I think Okay, we've got We Love Music, WMC 2008 sampler. It's cool. Don't recognize any of these names, but I'm sure it's, uh, sure it's some cool stuff on there. All right, here we've got Metropolis Sampler Part 2. Let's see. Some cool stuff on there. And there's a, another note in here. Nothing like a good uh, promo sheet, right? That's awesome. Frenetica EP, various artists, Power DJ. Oh, Power Promotions. Really cool. Uh, Dino Lenny. That's cool. Look, it's got a MySpace link on there. MySpace.com slash Dino Lenny. Super cool. It says, as supported by Armin Van Buren. Awesome. So he must have been in his prime around this time, I'm guessing. All right, here we've got Recluse uh, Label Sampler. Another MySpace link. Loco and Jam. MySpace.com slash Loco and Jam. Some cool stuff on there. I'm not familiar with most of these so we're just kind of breezing through this is yoko 001 nina and it just says old school master so <laughs> that's pretty cool just want to look at the cd see if it's uh cool we're almost through. I think there's, we just got two more CDs left and then we can get into the, uh, get into the uh, records. This is great. Sean Cusick, Radio Interference. Love that Sean Cusick track, uh, Consider the Ravens on uh, Dave Seaman's Melbourne mix. That one's incredible. Okay, what is this? Tom's Fast? This one, I'm not, I don't actually know what this is. 
Looks like a Nix CD. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm really, this one I'm not really sure what to make of. I'm not sure if I bought this or, <laughs> I don't think I bought this. I don't remember this. So maybe it's another one from, from Dave's stuff. All right, well, that's it for the CDs. So now let's continue on with these, uh, these vinyl and the acetates. So here, let's see. I just want to see what, uh, what we're working with here. Oh, there's even more CDs. Okay, yeah, let's open this box first. So I think this other box is probably all the acetates. I'm just going to uh, take this Karen Ramirez one move here. All right, here we've got a couple more. Let's see. So this one came from Dave's collection. I remember buying this one. This is a uh, Francesco Pico. And um, yeah, this one's pretty rare because it seems like a lot of these only came out as MP3 for some reason. Um, but uh, I, I, I sampled some of them on uh, YouTube and I kind of liked the sound of it. So I figured, yeah, see right there, very limited unmixed version. So it was only, a lot of these were just part of a mix, and I don't think they ever came out. Francesco Pico, that's interesting. This is super cool. So these are uh, these are some Depeche Mode remixes that Sasha did, and uh, this is like a super early like CDR cut that, uh, that Sasha gave to Dave Seaman. And so on here you can see it's got like, um, I was looking at these run times, and I think, I think, uh, so, so this, this is Precious, Depeche Mode Precious. And so Sasha did a few remixes that came out. So these first two, the durations line up with the released versions. I think it's like Sasha's Gargantuan mix. And uh, and then the other one, I, I forget, maybe it was just Club Mix, but I feel like it had a different name. Um, but all of these other ones, <laughs> I'm not sure what these are. And, um, and Black Swarm, supposedly that was, that was like a name that was used for uh, Depeche Mode so that, um, you know, it, it, it would, they would kind of disguise the Depeche Mode name with that to prevent tracks from getting leaked. Um, but yeah, so all of these, I'm not, I'm not sure what any of these mixes are. I'm not sure if they're variations on, on the final two, but really cool to have that. All right, here we've got a Mix Mag Live CD. Cool stuff on there. DJ's at work, Volume Two, Graham Park. Really cool. I, I know, I know, Graham Park, Graham Park is like a legend, but I, I uh, admittedly haven't really listened to, uh, to anything he's done. So, so we can fix that with this. <laughs> and then, uh, oh yeah, it's got the picture of the Dave Seaman DJ's at work down there. That one's classic. What is this? This is another salt tank CD, I think. ST7. Oh, science, science and nature, ST7. I'm trying to see what tracks are on here. Oh, okay, it's got Eugenia, Pacific Diva. Cool stuff. <laughs> Physical, tangible CDs. Yep, exactly. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, Adept. W where are you watching from? We got some people from uh, San Francisco, Norway. Uh, I'm just outside of New York here. So, um, what is this? Code thirty six. I'm not sure what this is. I don't think I. This one might be from, from Dave's stuff as well. Awesome. No idea what that is. I can't even read that. <laughs> Interesting. All right, now we're into the vinyl. So this will be exciting. Uh, this one right away I can tell you is an acetate, just from picking it up. I'm, not sure what this is. Oh, okay, this is Jane Hanna, Lost Without You. 
CL Mc, uh, McSpadden remix on that side, and I guess that's it. It looks uh, single-sided. I think this came out with a different name, but but CL McSpadden is the one who did the remix. Uh, so I forget which um, the, I forget the name of the actual remix. All right, here we got So Damn Beautiful. Um, I think, let's see, what's on here? Okay, it's got the Dogzilla mix. When I ordered this one, I, I think uh, it was supposed to be an acetate. And, um, and then my friend sent me a picture of it when it showed up, and I was like, huh, that's not an acetate. And I messaged the seller, and he was saying, he, he didn't realize what an acetate was. He had it mislisted, but, you know, it, it was okay. We we got everything sorted. But, yeah, classic tune. And I didn't have the Dogzilla mix already, so it was, you know, no disappointment there. Wyoming. Awesome. Cool. See, I'll make that. Oh, okay, that's the Edge, Edge Factor mix. That's, like, uh, super cool. I love that mix. The Evolution mix, though, that one's, like, that one's my favorite version of the... Uh, um, the Jane Hannah Lost Without You. So, um, yeah, let's see what this is. Okay, this is a Danny Tanag. This is my first Danny Tanaglia uh, track on an acetate. So here we got Music is the Answer. And this is the Future Shock vocal mix. Super cool. I think that's uh, a yeah, single-sided. Definitely needs a new sleeve. Look at this one. It's like falling out of the side there. Okay. We got a couple masterpiece ones here, it looks like. Um, also some cool info for you guys. So last time I was, when I was, uh, when we did the last unboxing and I was talking about the acetates, um, I've since learned a bit more about, about um, just like the general process of, you know, when the DJs would get these cut. So last time I was saying that the acetates were reference cuts for the final, um, you know, before they made test pressings and all that, that, that wasn't a hundred percent accurate. Um, in some case, like I do have a few acetates that were definitely used as reference cuts for like the commercial release. Um, but that's, um, you know, that, that, that wasn't the, typically the test pressings would be the reference that was used before they did a big run. And, uh, and as far as these DJ copies, these were, these were pretty much never reference cuts. They would just, um, you know, this was just the only way they could play out the tracks in the club. Um, but another question that I actually had um, was, you know, wh why is it sometimes, you know, masterpiece, sometimes tape to tape, um, you know, triple uh, seven productions. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other names. There's Whitfield Street. There are a bunch of these studios, right? In some cases, the studios were uh, renamed a few times. So, Tape to Tape became Heathman's, I think Whitfield Street became something else, or it used to be something else. Uh, I'd have to double check, but um, but yeah, so I was curious. I was like, you know, did, like, for, for example, Nick Warren seemed to have a ton that were cut at uh, Loud Mastering, so I wasn't sure if that was just his favorite spot or whatnot, um, or maybe it was just the closest geographically, but, but anyway, so it turns out that a lot of the time it was actually just based purely on which studio had the availability to cut it, right? Because, you know, these studios are, 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 are busy. They've got, you know, you got to have like an appointment or something. <laughs> and uh, so, so if you wanted a track cut, maybe you had a gig and you had to play and uh, you wanted to get the track in time, you know, you'd call all the shops and see which one was available to cut it for you, you know, ASAP. And then whichever one could do it, then that was the one that you ended up going with. So, <laughs> so that was interesting to learn. Um, and then another cool tidbit too. So like this one, I know that Dave Seaman had a copy of this because uh, I saw it on Discogs. Um, it was actually, his copy was cut a few days later than this one. This one was cut by Nick. Uh, so it's just cool to see that, you know, Nick probably went in and had his cut right away. And then, you know, sent the CDR to Dave or something. Then Dave got his own cut a few days later. So, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's continue. Um, Lace making double work at the mastering studios. Yep. All right. 
Let's see what this one is here. Okay, we've got Deconstruction Records. This is, I'm, I'm Rushing 95. I think this is Bump. Bump I'm Rushing. And this has a dub. Cool. And again, with, with these really nice old sleeves that you can't seem to buy anywhere. I was actually thinking of reaching out to uh, Masterpiece Studios because there's uh, Masterpiece is still around. So Tape to Tape, which became Heathman's, that one's gone. Um, I think a lot of the studios are gone. Metropolis is still around. Masterpiece is still around. It's cool. It's got the handwritten stuff there. Um, all right, let's see what we got next. All right, this is awesome. So we've got Luzon, the Baggio track, uh, most likely. And then we've got Tijuana. So this track, Digweed would have used on his Global Underground Los Angeles. So yeah, we got the bedrock mix of uh, Luzon. It says uh, Voices. That's weird. Be Luzon, Bedrock Voices. I'm get it's got to be the Baggio track. <laughs> but, um, and then on this side is Tijuana. I can't remember the name of the song, but definitely it was... It was used, I think it's like the something, the groove, Tijuana. Anyway, but that is definitely on GU19. So, uh, and then this was Dave's copy. But yeah, you see what I'm talking about? Like this sleeve, super dirty. So it's gonna have to be replaced, which is fine. But, you know, it's a shame because I, I don't know where to buy these. Groove is in the air. Yep, thanks. That's the one. All right, here we've got another nice tape to tape here. This is this is a BT track, it looks like. So this is, this is, I, I said this last time too, but like, yeah, these tape to tape logos are, I'm not sure what the deal with these is, cause like, even this one here looks a little older for tape to tape, but generally they look like this. Like this is something, to you know, totally else. So I'm thinking this, these are s slightly older. Uh, but this is BT Loving You More. And here it says BT's Dub Extravaganza. And it looks like a single sided. So cool. Let's get that back in the sleeve. We're probably going to be here a little while longer, just fair warning, so. <laughs> but this whole thing's going to be recorded, so if you have to go anywhere. Um, all right, here we've got Return of the Native, The Lost Tale, Evolution's Escape Remix. Um, somebody helped me out. I think that was on a mix CD. Uh, oh, and then here we've got Evolution Phoenix, The Evolution 99 Remix. Uh, and it's super cool. Dave always wrote the key and BPM for both tracks up here, I guess most of the time. So, so yeah, that's super cool. I've been some, this sleeve doesn't look too bad, but the ones I've had to replace, I've tried to, I write, I write, uh, you know, I'll copy over that info to the new sleeve. So that's helpful to have. All right, here we got a loud mastering. See bedrock there, so that's always exciting. This is set in stone. It says untitled, but later on set in stone. And here we've got for what you dream of beach house vocal mix. I think that's. I don't. That's not Blue Amazon, is it? Who did that mix? But anyway, for what you dream of beach house vocal mix. Classic Blue Amazon, yep, awesome. Okay, this is cool. I've never seen an acetate uh, from here, Tape One Studios. Um, and this is a Domsky. Oh yeah, I, this one actually it was listed for a while on Discogs and I I was interested in it, but you know, I, I kind of held off for, for a while, but finally I decided to get this. So this is, um, this is a Domsky, um, 
And this is Overkiller, which, um, so there's, um, so the CD that this came out, th this was a CD only release, pretty much, digital only. It was never pressed. Um, but there's another song, I think it's Killer by Adamski with, uh, it's got Seal singing, I'm pretty sure. Um, George Michael even did a version. <laughs> but this, uh, Overkiller, it's like the last track on the CD and uh, it's just instrumental. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm guessing at some point Dave thought it was good enough where he wanted to play it out in the club. So he got this acetate. And uh, so this is probably the only copy with it. Only physical 12-inch uh, copy. But yeah, super cool song. Nice to have that. But yeah, Tape One Studios. I've never seen that one before. So if anyone has any info on that, definitely let me know. All right, let's see. Here we've got Whitfield Street. Um, hold on, I just want to check real quick because it's, it's driving me crazy. What, what did Whitfield Street used to be? All right, let's see here. Okay, all right, so... So, so before it was called Whitfield Street, it was called C it was CBS Studios London, and then it became the Hit Factory London. So sometimes you'll see acetates that say the Hit Factory, um, and then after it was, um, or, or actually, and then it became Sony Music Studios, and then it became Whitfield Street again. I think. Hmm. I don't know. I still gotta read more on it, but. Anyway, so on here we've got, oh, okay, this is cool, Mariah Carey, and it's, uh, it's I, I think it's Always, uh, I, I can't remember who did the remixes on here, but some pretty cool remixes, Groovapella, ST-Dub, let me just look this up for you guys real quick. Okay, yeah, so, so we've got the David Morales remixes, and then there's actually also this right here, ST, Satoshi Tomi. Um, so that's really cool, that's Satoshi Tomi dub. Um, awesome. Okay, this one, this is awesome, because you know what, for the longest time I've never, I haven't had a uh, masterpiece acetate with this sticker on here. You've noticed, like, they put the different stickers on. And so finally I've got like whatever this is. It, like, it looks like a toucan or something, but who knows, like a banana? I have no idea, <laughs> but uh, awesome to have that. And let's see what we got in here. So this is Plank 15, Strings of Life Curfew Mix. And then we've got on this side, it just has two vocal parts. <laughs> um, Okay, so it's got it's got uh, uh, it's got a placebo vocal, so passive aggressive, the brothers in rhythm a cappella, and then it just says unknown artist vocal parts. Interesting. So that's what it says on Discogs. So that's exciting. And yeah, so they, so far these have all been Dave's. Um, all right, here we've got the fourth remix of BT, Loving You More. And then on this side, we've got the Man With No Name instrumental and the Man With No Name remix. Um, and it's in this sleeve for a totally different release. <laughs> All right, here we've got Master Room. This is another one of those old studios. Uh, so Master Room, here we go again. Paul Gotell bump and mix, and then we've also got the Paul Gotell um, bump and dub. This is uh, Lena Fiagbi, I think that's how you say her name. She's the one who did the original track. And then here we've got, here we go again, Paul Gotell um, something anthem mix, and then the raw vocal dub.
All right. Okay, here we've got Highland, and this is going to be, this is No Way Out, the classic tune from Cape Town. I think the last track on disc two of Cape Town, uh, Dave Seaman, Global Underground 16. On this side it says Untitled, but I'm pretty sure it's actually, um, it's that other Highland track from the B side of the commercial release. Let's see, Highland looking it up real quick reinforced I think that's what it is um, so yeah nothing unreleased there speaking of Highland I'm, I'm really looking for that uh, Highland Forsaken part one mix that Dave would have used on his Renaissance America and it looks like that acetate got sold a long time ago like uh close to 10 years ago uh but it's out there somewhere so one day hopefully i can get my hands on that oh look here we've got highland no way out again <laughs> and it says untitled mix i think this is also reinforced so um again nothing unreleased there on this side though it just says pr pr6 prg it's funny because i think the last time we did one of these videos there was also an acetate that just said PRG. Um, and I think that usually refers to uh, like a, this guy, Christian something. Let me look this up real quick. I think the guy from Bullet. Um, Kristen Parkinson. I'm pretty sure it refers to him, uh, but I'm not sure what that track is. Hold on a sec. Okay, I found it. Okay, it's it's Bullet Ricochet, and uh, it's the Christian West remix that's what that is so awesome yeah christian that christian west man he did some great remixes um really great stuff and uh i think like eterna that's fantastic a lot of those came out on fluid um all right let's see Okay, so here we've got, this one is Skedaddle, Gloat. So that's a Dave, Dave track. And then it looks like on the other side we've got, just as side one. Hmm. Okay, so this side one, but here it's written The Fall. So I'm thinking maybe it might be uh, way out west. Yeah, because here it says wow. Way out, well, actually, the sticker says way out west, so um, so yeah, I think that's the fall original mix, which also was used on Cape Town. I think it was Skedaddle used on Cape Town. I know that, uh, let's see, there was Skedaddle, and then the B side was what it was. Um, one of them was used on Renaissance Awakening, I think that one was Skedaddle. And then there was the other gloat track. I, I'm trying to remember the name. That one's probably in this batch too, so I guess we'll stumble across it. Um, all right. Okay, here we've got Sister Bliss, and it says Simon Dub. So let's see what this is. So here we've got Free At Last. Okay, that was used on... Uh, the Renaissance Mix Collection Part 4, I think it was Part 4, um, with, with uh, it was Ian Asia and Dave Seaman. Uh, Sister Bliss, Deliver Me, Express 2 Main Mix. That's so cool. Yep, Gloat Warp. Yeah, that was the other one. So I think Warp was used on Cape Town along with The Fall. 
Um, and then there was also skedaddle used on Renaissance Awakening. I could be wrong about that though, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, another cool thing about the fall. So, so I know, so I actually have a couple other copies uh, from Dave's collection with the the original mix of that way. Well, that's the fall. And um, but I was listening to it, and um, you know, like I mean, it, it nothing immediately jumped out to me or anything about uh, like I didn't think the track was different in any way to the release version. But then one day I was listening to the release version, and I realized like this is whole additional. Um, kind of like more li more lively section that was in the released version and it's not in this version. This one is more stripped down. I think it's like an earlier version of the track. And if you listen to the Cape Town mix, it's actually the same. Uh, like, like it's got that more stripped down version. So, um, and as far as I can tell, it isn't on any of like the, the you know, official releases. Um, so, so I'm, I'm almost positive. If, if you go back and listen to the Cape Town mix again, and you listen to the fall, you know, if you just pay a, a, attention to it, you might be able to hear that it's like a, a more stripped down earlier version of the track. All right. Uh, same with the Bedrock remix from John Digweed's LA mix. Yep, exactly. The, uh, the, the, the Bedrock, I mean, that mix is insane. Um, I've actually got from Nick's collection there's an acetate with the bedrock mix and i played it and it, and it had that longer version from uh the version that digweed used on that mix so when i played that i like jumped out of my chair i couldn't believe it it's like totally different um even like the bass sound like right at the very start of the track it's it's just totally different i mean that track is definitely one of my prized possessions um so this is cool, Copy Masters. Oh, this this is you know I also, so Copy Masters actually became masterpiece. I'm pretty sure. So um, I didn't realize that until recently. But yeah, so here we have Copy Masters, and this is Sunscream Broken English, uh, Well Hung Parliament Dub. And then on this side we've got the Well Hung Parliament Smiley Adventure. <laughs> I love when they go crazy with these track names. You know, when they have fun with it like that. All right. Here we got another Copy Masters. And this one is, oh, this is also broken English, but this has the well-hung parliament vocal. And then on the other side, See what we got on the other side. We have the slam vocal mix and the slam dub mix. Cool. Okay, we're getting we're nearing the end of this box. Um, okay, here we've got Nerva Moto Seven instrumental, uh, and then here we've got the Santo Nerva de Mercia mix. I think this one came. Uh, this one was on. I think this was on Cape Town too. Um, it was either Cape Town or Renaissance Awakening. If I could get it back in here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, for me, there's just, there's just something, like, special about having these records that, like, uh, Dave might have actually used to make these mixes. I know, like, um... Like there are a couple records that he definitely used um, when he recorded these mixes. Um, okay, this is Zamo Coyote for the Night. Ki okay, interesting. So this release is Coyote for the Night. I'm not sure where Zamo comes from. Can't see that sleeve needs to go, so <laughs> we'll replace that. And then on the other side, we've got Stronger Now. This is another Coyote track. This is early stress record stuff. But yeah, later on I'm gonna wash all these and then uh, or I'm gonna clean them on the machine and then I'm gonna replace all the sleeves. Okay, here we got another Coyote Spirits Dancing. 
Um, yeah, this is some really great stuff from the, you know, classic Stress Records. Um, okay, and then I think I think there's the last two here. So we've got Robert Owens, I'll Be Your Friend, and it's a remix. We got a nice Perfecto sticker there. Um, and that is the, it's got Deckard's Satellite Vocal. And then the other side has Deckard's Cable Mix. Is that what that says? Deckard's Cable. Cable Dub. All right. And then the last one in this box, we've got, this is the way, E-Type. And that looks single-sided there. So I think I think this was also used on uh, Renaissance Mix Collection Part 4, I think. All right, cool. Now we can move into this other box. Wow, so that was like pretty much all acetates. I think, um, yeah, I think it was only acetates in there. Here's the second box, and this will be the last of it, but uh, it probably takes a little while to go through it. Um, all right, let's see what we got. So here we've got Snappiness Revisited. This is BBG. Um, it's, not the, it's not the one that everyone's after, though. The um, uh, do anything that, like, with the, there's a the Millennium Pressure dub, and then there's, like, uh, the Pink Bomb remix. Everybody's after that one lately, so definitely uh, keep an eye out. But yeah, this is Snappiness. Okay, we got another Master Room here. We've got Sing It, Mosaic, and this is the Goodfellows remix and the Sanctified mix. And we've got Quiver's Dirty Dub and the Radio Edit on this side. All right, here we've got Submerge Instrumental. Not sure what that is. This one's cut 1996. And then here we've got Submerge Instrumental. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, yeah, this these sleeves, yeah. <laughs> these Master Room ones, I feel like a lot of the time they get marked up like that. Um, I'm just going to look this up real quick. Submerge. Not sure what that one is. Okay, this is uh, Take Me By The Hand. And uh, it's the same on both sides. I'm not, this might have been used on a Renaissance or something. I'd have to double check. Okay, here we've got Evolution, Your Love Is Calling, The Mix. And then on this side, it's uh, a dub mix. So that's cool. Where was this cut? This is TM Mastering. That's another new one to me. Interesting. All right, here we've got another master room. Brand new day. Space Kittens vocal mix. Quiver's Amityville dub, and then let's see, it says right there the track. Minds of Men. Okay, that's, that's, okay, so it's Minds of Men, Brand New Day. And then on this side, we've got Night in Paris dub. Oh, so that one became Transformation? That's good to know. Okay, here we got another Billy Ray Martin. And uh, it looks like another BT remix. So, oh, Jacob's Ladder mix. Huh, okay. It's the same as the other one we saw. And then on this side, okay, but this one's got some other mixes. Here we got BT's Shelter mix, and, B, uh, and then there's an extended mix.
Let's see. Here we got Coca Coca Cabana. I think I uh, remember this. So this is. Yeah, see, this sleeve needs to go too. Yeah, this one needs a clean, but uh, we've got Coca Cabana BT Mix. And then here we've got, it says Sasha Mix. Oh wow, the sleeve is like falling apart when I'm trying to put it back in. <laughs> Next up, we've got, okay, this is an a and uh, Losing Weight, Deep Dub, Reprise, cut number four, apparently. This is an American one, a and um, Interesting, cut number four. I don't know what this is. Oh, well, I guess it says right there, Losing Weight, Deep Dub. Let me just look that up. Okay, so that's that's uh, Chris Fortier, and um, yeah, he 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 he's based in the U.S., so he it would have made sense that he would cut an A and R slate. All right, um, okay, this is cool. Sultana Tiamo, and this has John Digweed's full on mix, and then we've got a Digweed dub. So yeah. Early copy masters there. Okay, here we got Sam Mollison Cry. This was definitely on Renaissance Mix Collection Part 4. Sam Mollison Cry. And on the other side, we've got Sam Mollison Cry. Cool. Okay, here we've got um, Junky XL and Loafer. Loafer, aka Alan Bremner, who was uh, involved with Brothers in Rhythm, along with Dave Seaman and Steve Anderson. Okay, here we got uh, Junky XL B Wop to the Y, although here it just says Bi Wop, <laughs> uh, but this was used on Renaissance Desire. And here we got Loafer Travelogue. Okay, all right, next up, we got Chrissy Ward, Right and Exact, the Fathers of Sound dub. And here we got Desert, Feelings Run So Deep. I think this was used on something. Uh, it's a classic tune. Oh, this is really funny. <laughs> this was in the last box, the, the last video I did too, but this this is just some like random hip hop uh, that um, there's an acetate I have from Nick Warren's collection. And on the back it had like, it was crossed out and it had like some test cuts, but I played it anyway. And, um, and it had like, you know, a few random cuts of songs like two of them were like had the name bush so i'm not sure if someone at the mastering house was like testing the machine and he was just like he had a you know he was going alphabetically at random and so he just started from like bush uh but anyway this song was on the back like a few test cuts of it and it was actually pretty catchy and uh and i noticed that the vinyl has um it actually has some instrumental versions so I, the, um, I mean, the vocal ver the album version here is pretty cool too. But, but I was actually curious to get that instrumental. So I bought a copy, um, and this is like some UK hip hop group from the early two thousands. Um, so like none of these copies are in the states anywhere. But I got a copy and I played it, and like I don't know, the sound quality wasn't that great. So I figured I'd just get another copy because um, it you know wasn't that expensive. 
But yeah, that's the funny story about that one. It was just, you know, on the on the back of a Nick Warren acetate with a staircase track on the other side. Um, all right, here we've got Sony Music Studio. So as we just determined that this is uh, what Whitfield Street used to be. And this has, oh, okay. Um, so this, this is, uh, what was that? Jan von Dahl? And it's got the Michael Woods remix of Try. Now, I'll tell you, the reason I got this, I actually got this one for free because it's dented, supposedly. Like, yeah, you can kind of see there. It's dented. And I have another acetate, which is, um, like, yeah, look at this side. Wow, do not play. Um, Alpha Zone remix. Maybe I'll try and play that anyway. But, uh, oh, oh, well... Only if it's unreleased. I don't, I don't know. I never heard of that. But I have another acetate which has like a super rare track on it. And it's like the only copy. But unfortunately, the acetate is like dented. So I asked the seller. I was like, hey, can you like toss this in one in for free? Because I want to like see if there's a way maybe to flatten it. But there's no way I'm going to test that on the other one. So I got this as a freebie to like... I don't know, test some flattening methods. But honestly, I'm not optimistic <laughs> because of the material of the stuff. It's like the lacquer is more likely to, to just like chip off. So, you know, but worst case, that one we can live without. All right, this is pretty cool. This is a Metropolis acetate. This one's got uh, Raj Worship You. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And it's got uh, Rob Searle's Exalted Vocal and uh, Searle's Re uh, Revered Radio Edit. And then we've also got T's Extended Worship and Rob Searle's Glorified Dub. So yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, I'm guessing, yeah, they probably didn't like it. Interesting. It, it could also have been like worn out or something and they just want to remind themselves not to play it anymore. Or maybe it was a issue with the cut uh who knows all right this is cool whoosh baby duck mix whoosh classic tr uh acid i think i don't i don't remember i'll have to give that one a listen again but i, I remember it's an awesome tune um so that's cool what's on the other side whoops looks like the same on both sides all right Okay, here we got another masterpiece one. So let's see what's in here. This is, okay, this is Bleachin' Pekin' Jimmy Van M slash Chris Allen mix. Um, yeah, I've never seen it. I've never seen it with this like Chris Allen here, but I'm pretty sure this is the same uh version that i think it was on i think dave used it on cape town this one i'm not actually sure if it belonged to dave uh like i think most of these in this box actually i like the definitely the last few didn't come from dave's collection but um uh, but yeah so i guess we'll we'll play this and we'll see if it's different to the others um yeah i think yeah I'm, yeah it's probably the cpr mix um Okay, here we got a loud mastering. No idea what that one is. I think we might. I think I, I I can't remember if this one comes from Nick Warren's collection, but there was one from Nick's collection in here that was just like unlabeled, so I have no idea what it is. Um, okay, here we got a Heathman's. This is the grind. Is that what that says? Hmm. Let's take a look. Oh, this one's unlabeled. Yeah, I think this comes from Nick's collection. Um, yeah, no idea what this is. We're going to have to play that and find out. Okay, this one's cool. This says Holden Slacker. And... Yeah, so here we got, we got Holden Dub. So not sure what the track is. 
And then here we got Slacker Track. So not sure what the track on that one is either. Cut uh, February 2001. It's 10 minutes, 10 seconds long on the Slacker Track. And then the Holden Dub here, we've got uh, 7 minutes and 54 seconds. So I'm not sure what either of these tracks are. That would be super interesting to hear. Yeah, they always, I, uh, it's always fun when they, when they like make a mysterious like this, um, you know, because, uh, you know, for them, like maybe they didn't want someone looking over and seeing the name of the track or, or maybe it was just like quicker to write this stuff down this way. I noticed that, yeah, th like th this one comes from Nick's collection and uh, yeah, N Nick would kind of, you know, type something quick or write something quick. There was one acetate from Nick's collection that I got, and literally the label just says, fuck off, nosy bastard. <laughs> and that one, I, I went to play it, and it was like uh, some Way Out West remix of, um, uh, it was like Dreams in Color or something. But yeah, that was really funny. Okay, here's another one that's just kind of scribbled on there. Um, yeah, it's double-sided. And let's see, the sleeve says, sleeve says tribal tanfuls and it slash the care. Hmm. So yeah, that's kind of, that's another mysterious one, but uh, I like the sound of uh, tribal. Tribal. All right, here we got a triple seven. I love these triple seven sleeves, they're so cool. Oh yeah, this one I also have no idea what this is. It just says the dream a uh, note at the park mix. And I don't know, I looked that up and I just couldn't find anything I couldn't find any indication of what that is. And then on this side it just says Ip True Silver Planet. So I'm thinking that came out on uh, Silver Planet uh, recordings. All right, here we got, and, and yeah, so these are all Nicks. This, um, starting with that uh, untitled uh, Loud Mastering one, these are all Nicks. Okay, this one says Paul Harris times two. Um, oh yeah, I know what one of these is. This is also Nicks. So here we got uh, Hold That Body. I think this was on the uh, Deep Dish Global Underground. And then on this side, we've got the release. Pretty cool. Yeah, this sleeve needs to be replaced. Chalk or grease pen. Yeah, I, I have no idea what they wrote, with, like, but it's like totally fading off. I bet you uh, give it another 10 years and there'll be nothing even written on it anymore. <laughs> um, okay, this is just a vinyl. We got... Roth and Freddie, Deeper Progress. So these are some remixes. Aquilia's Deeper Progress Mix and the Sphere Mix. So that came out on Avant Garde. Cool, if true of Yunus, awesome. But yeah, no, um, not sure what that other one is on the, on the A side of that. Okay, here we got Cast and Slide, Diablo, Evolution Mix. And on this side, we've got the Advocate mix. As featured on John Digweed's Global Underground Mix CD from Hong Kong. Awesome. Okay, this one is, this one's awesome. T uh, Tesseract Records, this is Clino Horizon, and we got Clino Voyager on there, as well as Spectralized. Uh, I always love when there's like a, a release like this, which has a crossover between Digweed and uh, Tiesto, uh, because Tiesto used the Voyager tune on his Forbidden Paradise, uh, I think it was Arctic Expeditions, so that would be Forbidden Paradise 5, and, uh, and then Digweed used Spectralized on uh, his Renaissance The Mix Collection Part 2, which is like... That, that mix is just incredible. I always go back to that one. 
Um, but yeah, that Spectral Eyes was like super cool, like melodic trance, you know, trance number. Um, I remember the first time I ever listened to that CD. And, um, you know, because at that point I had already listened to Forbidden Paradise 5 like a bunch of times. And by the way, Forbidden Paradise 5 probably is my favorite in the entire series. Like, you know, it's got that Commander Tom RMI in there. And that was the first time I ever heard that track. But just an absolutely massive uh, mix. Um, but I always liked the Voyager, especially the way Tiesto mixed. Uh, uh, he goes from... I think he goes into it from... Uh, a track by Coyote called like Hidden Cl uh, Clouds or something. And then it's like the Attic Mix, um, which funny enough, it's a different um, Coyote than the Stress Records one. Uh, but anyway, that's all, this is all Forbidden Paradise. But the first time I ever listened to the John Digweed Mix Collection Part 2 and I heard this Spectralize, I'm like, wow, that sounds a lot like, like the Voyager track from forbidden paradise and sure enough it was the same artist so you know it's always cool when when an artist has like a distinct style like that that you can just pick them right out even though the only other song i had ever heard from them was this uh voyager tune so um so yeah and then we also got horizon and no one on here um so yeah they they it, clino didn't seem to doesn't seem like they released many tracks but um you know I mean, so far, the ones I've heard are all good. All right. Um, this is super cool. This is Deep Forest, and uh, it's got the Apollo 440 mix here of Sweet Lullaby. So, um, yeah, that's just, like, super classic. Obviously, there's the, uh, on Northern Exposure, you've got the Deep Forest remix of the Apollo 440 uh, Liquid Cool. But then I came across this, and it was like, okay, well, so Apollo, you had a, uh, you had Deep Forest remix Apollo, and here you've got Apollo remix Deep Forest, and uh, it's it's a really great track, like a nice, you know, kind of pro um, you know progressive, uh, but like super classic, like hypnotic, you know, you know, it's, it's super relaxing kind of track here, so. Uh, and the original mix of this is like a, you know, I mean, that's a major classic. It was a commercial, uh, um, you know, huge success commercially uh, and for good reason. Okay. This one's, this one comes from Nick's collection again. This is super cool. So this is, uh, you might recognize that. This is a fade acetate um, and it says here plenty. So, uh, Plenty, it's a Sarah McLaughlin track. Um, so just like he remixed, uh, you know, Delirium Silence, uh, we've got, uh, Plenty. So I think that's what's on here. Uh, and it says Vocal Alt Sanctuary. So I'm guessing he, you know, he, he, he came out with that one, uh, you know, the Sanctuary mix of Delirium. Now on this side it says Alt Dub. So I'm interested to hear this, because as far as I know, there's no dub mix of Plenty that was released. Uh, but who knows? Maybe, it, I mean, it could be a totally different track altogether. I'm trying to, you can kind of see, like, this is a sticker on top of an a and um, you, you can kind of see, so I'm trying to make out what it might say under there, but... Um, Yeah, it's hard to read. Hmm. Anyway, super cool. Some more Chris Fortier there. And that one comes from Nick's collection. I think we're down to the last one, guys. Okay, here it is. And this was also from Nick's collection. And this one says, tell me club mix. I have, I have no idea what this one is. 
and uh, yeah, single sided. So yeah, tell me club mix. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for. Well, actually, you know what? Uh, I can also show you some other recent ones I've gotten since I have the that other box I went and grabbed. Um, so yeah, why don't we let's take a look at some of these because uh, these are cool too. Some of these have been coming in like you know the last couple months, so um, so yeah, let's start with this. So here we got TMM um, Power Dip CMOS K. This I got this for this CMOS K track. Really cool, like you know, classic kind of harder trance. Um, TMM TMM is actually and uh, pull this one out here, Trilithon. So Trilithon. Uh, well, TMM was another project of Trilithon, and this track here, this is like my all-time favorite Trilithon. I, um, I recorded a video of this one a while back, and I just haven't published it yet, but um, this is just like awesome classic trance, you know, harder trance, but this is, this is an old one. This one's like 1991 or 1992. Let me, let me see what it says on here. No, I don't see it on here. But this guy, this uh, Hub Shippers, he was really, really classic. Um, or, you know, great producer. And the cool thing with this release, too, is it's got three versions. So you got Prayer, Mix 1, and then on the back you got two more mixes. And then none of them are that different from one another. It's just slightly different arrangements. Uh, and I love it when they do that because it gives you, like, a lot of creative flexibility with how you play the track. So... Uh, so those two are great. Let's see. Oh yeah, I got another copy of that. <laughs> um, yeah, 1991. So really ahead of its time, I gotta say that prayer track. Okay, here we got Siberia. This is a Ferry Corsten project. This is a bypass. This is the um, that was the name he was using under this. So bypass Siberia. This is also from that, like, early Tiesto, um, you know, time frame. I'm not exactly sure of the year, but, uh, but yeah, I think that was on one of those old Tiesto CDs. Um, okay, here we got Hamill, Close, the Evolution Mix, and, uh, actually, they're both Evolution Mixes. But the Evolution Remix, the A-side here, I think was used on... It was on Dave Seaman's Melbourne, and he went from this into Sean Cusick, Consider the Ravens. And then from there, I think he went into Magic Dust. So that's super cool. Uh, there's not so many in here, so this won't take so long. But we got some Heart House. Um, I was talking to someone a while back about how I'm trying to get all the Heart House releases. Um, I didn't realize what an undertaking that would be because it's the catalog is pretty big. But so this is... This was just one I got as part of that uh, goal. So there were quite a few Hard House ones that came in recently. This was another one, Virtual Symmetry Information. Uh, virtual Symmetry is, you know, total classic. That's an IQ artist as well. Okay, here we got another Hard House, Synthetic Progress, second generation. Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, I, I quickly re, um, I quickly pivoted from, okay, I'm going to get all the Heart House releases to, okay, never mind, I'm going to get all of the Guardian Angel releases instead. So this is this is that one I was talking about, West and Storm Porpoise. Uh, so, so West is uh, Tiesto in there, uh, his last name, Ver West, and then Storm. I'm not sure who Storm is, but um, but yeah, they, they made quite a few cool tracks together, West and Storm. They all kind of have like uh, this really like stripped down kind of basic sound to them, which, um, you know, it, like, everybody loves to talk about how like, oh, Tiesto like didn't produce a lot of his, you know, they they talk about that Dennis guy. I think his name's Dennis. And, um, but it's funny because like the majority of the Tiesto that I've listened to, even his own productions, I think it was before that Dennis guy came to the picture. And, um, but it's funny because when you listen to a track like this, like, or, or even some of the other early ones, the, 
you know, like I'm pretty certain that Tiesto was like, I, you know, he, he must have been more involved in these because they don't sound as polished as a lot of tracks, even other tracks from the same time period. Um, but nonetheless, I'm sure like Storm or whoever this was, was also pretty uh, heavily involved in the production. Um, you know, but it's, it's, and it's not a knock against Tiesto. Tiesto was, he was always a DJ first, you know? And, um, uh, I mean, that's, that's where his strength really was. So, um, but I, I, I really do like some of these early Tiesto tracks. Okay. This one's super cool. Um, this is, I actually heard this played recently in a club by Tara Brooks. She opened up for Digweed in November of last year at Superior Ingredients in uh, New York, Brooklyn. Um, but yeah, this this track here, Plastic Replicant, really cool. Um, and I think this is a pretty new track. I think this just came out in 2022. Uh, so check it out, really cool. It's got like a classic sound to it, um, but it's really, you know, sci-fi sci and um, awesome tune. I really liked it. Okay, this is cool. This is Trilithon again. Um, Let me feel what you need, the Rick D remix. And then on this side is another uh, another Rick D remix. If I jump, I'll jump for you. I haven't heard either of these, and it uh, doesn't seem like they're on YouTube, so I'm going to record this and put it up. Um, not, I don't really know too much about this Rick D guy, but uh, I, I was reading, I guess he also goes by Ricky the Dragon. Um, and it's interesting because these were pressed in the U.S., but I didn't think Stealth was a U.S. record label. Uh, but Rick D, maybe he was a U.S.-based artist, whereas Trilithon would have been in Europe somewhere. Um, but yeah, so I got two copies of that, actually. Both sealed. <laughs> okay, here we got Trilithon again. Uh, I was also trying to get all of the Trilithon releases. So I've got like all the CDs now, I think, pretty much. Um, so now I'm just trying to fill in the gaps with the records. So I get, you know, Prayer, Children of the Future. Um, I got the TMM one there. I, they, they were just really ahead of their time. Like this track too. I think this is also from 1991, Children of the Future. And again, they've got four different mixes of it. You know, they're, they're basically all just different arrangements. And if you get the CD, the Trilithon CD from 1991, um, which is called, what is that CD called? Trans Dance 128. And um, it's got like another, like it, it, it has a mix of Children of the Future, but it, I forget what, uh, they gave it a different name or something. Uh, or actually, maybe I'm thinking of Prayer. It's, it's, they have it written as like mutant version or something. But anyway, but they, you got all four versions on here. And um, yeah, it's just super cool. You know, it gives you that flexibility on how you want to play it back. Because cause they're all pretty much just differently arranged and maybe a different sound in this one. What's also really cool on this is that they gave you a list of all the equipment they used. So you can see they use an Atari. Uh, they used a Roland D50. Uh, and they even went and told you that they used it with the PG-1000 programmer, which was super cool. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's super cool that they included all this because, you know, you're, it, it's like one of my first questions about a track is like, what equipment did they use on this? Um, Korg M1R. Um, I've actually got a few of these. I have the Korg M1R. I've got the rack mount version of this. Um, so, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully uh, this year I can actually spend time trying to make some stuff because I haven't really touched any of it in a while. Okay, this one's super cool. I'm going to put this one up soon. Um, I actually had to go out and buy a second copy of this because I wasn't satisfied with the sound on this. But this is uh, Stay With Me Till Dawn. Uh, and these are mixes by Lucid. Uh, well, it's a track by Lucid, but uh, the Translucid remixes. And... Especially the Sunset Remix. It's really cool. It doesn't seem like the full version's on YouTube. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. And um, I actually, there was an acetate from Nick Warren's collection, which had this on there. And it was really cool. Great track. Um, and yeah, that's it in this box. So awesome, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. We've been going for... 
let's see, it says 104 minutes, so that's a little less than two hours. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. It's always fun to open these, uh, you know, go through all these records with some other people. So, um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I guess, I guess we can end the video now, but, um, yeah, definitely. I'm going to go wash all these. It's going to take forever. And, uh, um, that, that's the longest part about all this is like cleaning the records. Cause I, I, I'm pretty like thorough with it. So I clean them all on the vacuum machine and, uh, and then I, when I play them, I try and like film it with the cameras. So that also adds some time to it. But yep, yeah, I'll, I'll film these. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we can find out what some of these unlabeled ones are or the ones with the cryptic labeling. And, uh, and I'll let you know what those turn out to be. Awesome. See you guys.